Hello again, I'm Matthew from thewetpen.com, and a few weeks ago I got a box in the mail from Korea. Korea isn't as well known for their fountain pens as their neighbors in Japan and China, but they do produce some of my favorite inks like Dominant Industry and Colorverse and Tono and Limbs, among others. But there are a few companies in South Korea that make fountain pens too, and one of them is called Eureka. Eureka is a small company like a lot of American handmade pen makers, but Eureka's focus, at least recently, has been making pens out of new and interesting materials. And that is what we have here. This pen is a Eureka Symmetry, which is machined out of a British developed thermoplastic called Peak. Peak is an expensive industrial performance plastic that is chemical resistant, so safe with corrosive acids and solvents. It's high temperature resistant, supposedly safe up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's also a high strength, high durability material. So we can expect it to hold up well to travel and heavy general use without cracking. As you can see, this peak material is a light warm gray or beige. So it's not flashy, but it does have a nice clean minimalist look that I like. Let's take a closer look at the details of this pen. On the exterior, there is no branding. It's just clean and smooth. There's just a hint of micro texture in the surface. It might be too fine for me to be able to show you. It should be visible in this close up. But either way, I can feel it, and it keeps the pen from feeling slippery. The body of the pen is straight until about four centimeters from the end, where it starts tapering down to the domed end. The cap is similarly shaped. It's straight for about half of its length, and then it tapers up to a rounded end as well. I'm gonna stick a little something on this cap so that we can count the turns that it takes to uncap it, and... It takes just under two full turns, which is not bad at all. And before we move on, let me just show you how perfectly these threads are cut. These things are absolutely perfect. And because of the properties of this material, the cap turning on the threads is pretty much effortless. It feels almost lubricated. This peak plastic doesn't really feel like the acrylics that most of my pens are made from. It feels harder. It's hard to explain. Unfortunately, I can't let you feel it for yourself through video, but maybe you can hear how it would feel. I'm just going to drop it onto a piece of marble here. You see what I mean? It's a higher pitch than you might expect. It's more like aluminum, maybe. Anyway, back to the pen. The grip section tapers down smoothly until it flares out at the base of the nib. Again, it's not a glossy, slick surface. There's that micro texture that makes it feel very secure in the hand. In fact, overall, this pen feels very nice in the hand. It's a good classic shape, not too big or too small, and the grip section is long enough to accommodate a lot of different grip positions. And the step down from the barrel to the threads and grip is gentle enough that it's not uncomfortable at all. Eureka makes this pen with a couple of other options for the grip section shape too, but I haven't tested those ones. Anyway, the nib is a German-made Bach, and although they're usually pretty reliable by themselves, Eureka also tunes their nibs for optimal performance as well. So this one writes really nicely. Let me show you. The tip is nice and smooth with no scratchiness at all. And the flow is just a little bit on the wet side of medium with this ink. If I unscrew the grip section here, you can see that inside there's a standard international cartridge converter. This one looks like a pretty basic one, nothing unusual there. 
As I was thinking about the peak material that this pen is made out of, I started to wonder what sort of corrosive chemicals I might encounter that would be a problem for a regular fountain pen, and the first thing that came to mind was Noodler's Base State Blue. It actually gets a bit of a bad rap. I love this ink, really, but it does react with all sorts of plastics and it can really stain. So let's see how it does with this pen. I'll take the cap off here. And I guess I'll just dip this whole pen barrel into the bottle. And... That's blue. Maybe this wasn't such a great idea. Let me rinse this off in some water. And it is still blue. Okay, luckily I know that this peak is pretty chemical resistant, so in this beaker I have a 25% solution of bleach. I'll dip the pen into this. And there we go. The blue just disappears except for where it's coming off my fingers. I'm not sure what conclusions I should be drawing from this little experiment, but I'm glad that the pen came clean again in the end. Well, I think that so far I've told you most of the things that I like about this pen. It's comfortable, it's well-made, the material seems like a perfect one for a utilitarian, heavy-use pen, and it writes perfectly. And I suppose it's worth mentioning, I've also let this sit with ink in it for about a week and a half on my desk, and when I picked it up again, it wrote without hesitation. So all of that's good, and I might as well mention now, this pen only costs $50 plus shipping, which is a remarkably good price for a pen of this quality. The only thing that I don't love about this pen is that it doesn't post. Well, not really. This seems like an unfortunate oversight. For a pen where its functionality and utility are at the forefront of its design, instead of its, you know, flashy appearance, it would be great if I could get the cap on there while I'm writing. But they have another model called the Asymmetry that I think might post. Speaking of other pen models, let me show you the size of this pen with some others for comparison. Here it is next to a Twisby Eco. And here it is with a Jinhao X159. When it's capped, it's about the same size as the Jinhao, and when it's uncapped, it's about the same length as the Twisby. Here's a larger pen, an Opus 88 Omar, and here's another hand-turned pen, a Birmingham Pen Company 6th Avenue, which is almost identical in length, capped and uncapped. So, if you're interested in glittery, colorful fountain pens, this one might not be for you, but if you're looking for a solid, reliable, sleek-looking pen at an excellent price, it's hard to do much better than this one. It appears that this model is now sold out on the Eureka website, but it probably won't be for long, so I'll put a link to their site down below. In other news, I just got a box of a bunch of new stuff from Endless Stationery in India, including some of the newest batch of regalia paper. So I'll be back soon with a video about how the new paper compares to the bad batch that I had several months ago. If you're interested in that sort of thing, I hope that you'll take a moment to subscribe to my channel, and as long as you're down there, consider clicking on that like button. And that's it! Stay safe out there, everyone, and enjoy your fountain pens and inks.